Welcome back everyone to another weather at a glance video. In today's forecast, we are going over our third preliminary winter forecast for our winter forecast series for the winter season of 2023. All coming up in just a bit. All right, and on our first slide here, we're taking a look at our temperature anomaly forecast map, and we're gonna start off here down in the southeast here. Um, as you can see, this says slightly below average, and that's regarding your temperature. So what this means basically is we are expecting those cooler conditions, slightly cooler conditions for much of the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. Now, this is going to be caused by the shape of our jet stream. We are expecting a fairly active subtropical jet stream by the time our winter season comes into play. And we are also expecting troughing to occur out here in the east. We could see a lot of storminess going on down here in the southeast and over into the mid-Atlantic as well with that negative NAO pattern we have been talking about in the last couple of forecasts. And we also are expecting a positive PNA pattern along with our El Nino conditions. So you can see this is pretty typical for a type of setup that we're expecting. So what does this mean? Overall, cooler conditions, not really too significant. So you're not going to walk outside and it's not going to be negative 20. That's not what we're saying. But generally slightly cooler conditions for your winter season if you live in this area. Now, on the contrary, we move up to the north where we see a lot of these slightly above average conditions. So like the slightly below, this isn't going to be an extreme drastic change, but we are expecting some slightly warmer conditions if you live in this area. So um, basically, you could see one to two, maybe even up to three degrees above average, uh, what you normally would expect in a winter season. So as you can probably tell, that's not going to be a lot. So if you typically see about 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe you could see some 33 to 43 degree Fahrenheit temperature range around that area, but we aren't really expecting too much of a temperature increase. But generally, from what we've been seeing in the pattern, we are expecting those slightly above average conditions temperature wise to affect much of the northern and western United States. Now, on our final region here, we are looking at that above average region, and this is where you likely will notice those significantly warmer conditions from what you would typically expect in a winter season. So, a lot of these areas, again, we've been talking about El Nino and the positive PNA factor along with that negative NAO. This is what you would typically see with all three of those combined. We do see warmer conditions in the West along with much of the Northern United States, far Northern United States being affected by those far warmer conditions than what we would typically expect. So that's why you're in the above average region. This would be even fairly a couple degrees warmer than what we'd expect over here in the slightly above average region. So basically maybe about five or so degrees above average. That's just a rough estimate kind of judging what we are talking about. And that's at times. Again, we will have cool downs with cold fronts and when systems move through, but generally warmer conditions throughout your winter season. Now, moving on to our next slide, we're looking at our precipitation anomaly forecast map. Now, what is this going to be showing you? This is going to be showing you the type of precipitation you can expect, whether that's going to be increased or decreased or average. So obviously, if you're in the area in the middle, you're going to be average or that's where we expect you to be. But starting off here down in the southeast again, we're going to be in the slightly above average region here. This stretches anywhere from New York City all the way down to Houston, Texas, and it affects much of Florida as well. So like those other slightly increased or slightly decreased regions, we are not really going to expect too much of a drastic change. So you're not going to be experiencing major flooding down here or anything like that. Um, but we are expecting slightly increased precipitation due to the way that the jet stream is striking up here. Again, we see that subtropical jet stream come through here, but we also see the polar jet stream at sometimes dip down. If we see an upper level low develop over the Great Lakes, we could see the polar jet stream stretch down and bring systems down into the southeast as well as the subtropical jet stream. So these two could often meet down here in the southeast and mid-Atlantic. That will be bringing way wetter conditions than what we typically expect and obviously leading to the increased precipitation probability. Now moving on down here to the above average region, as you suspected, this is where you're gonna notice those far increased conditions, a lot of rainier conditions. And again, we see a lot of precipitation in this area throughout the year, but as we move into the winter months, this is where we expect those drier conditions to typically set up. And that is likely not gonna be the case this winter. We are expecting wetter conditions. And obviously if we're talking about a lot of constant rainfall moving through, we will likely see above average precipitation totals overall for our winter season. Now, moving on up here to the northwest and north central United States, we do see that slightly below average region here. So this is going to be slightly decreased precipitation for you guys who live up here. And that is going to be caused by the polar jet stream staying far northward. We see a lot of ridging out over the Pacific Ocean here, and we do see that that's going to shove that polar jet stream northward at times. 
and obviously that's going to keep it more over here to the Great Lakes and Midwest, kind of dipping down as we talked about with that trough, but we do see the ridge over here kind of keeping things drier. Now that doesn't mean you won't see any systems. We will still see those typical polar jet stream type Pacific systems move off of the Pacific Ocean and onshore here towards Portland, Oregon and Seattle, Washington, but we do see a decreased level of that activity as we move into the winter from what we see so far. Now moving into our final two regions here on the map, we do see below average precipitation for Seattle and Portland, Oregon. Uh, and then we also do see below average conditions here for much of the Northern Rockies here for Montana and Idaho and over here in the Washington as well. So a lot of that decreased precipitation for where we typically see a lot of snowy conditions this time of year when we head into winter. And we do also see a lot of decreased rain and snow conditions in that temperate rainforest climate up there in the Pacific Northwest. So really, we're going to see a bit drier conditions for those areas overall. Now, moving on to our next map, this is the snowfall anomaly forecast map. We can't go into winter without discussing snowfall. That's a big part of winter. But what are we going to expect this season? And like the other anomaly forecast maps, this is going to discuss whether you're going to see above average conditions or below average conditions. So we're going to start over here in the mid-Atlantic and kind of discuss this increased probability that we are looking at. So we see anywhere from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way down throughout much of the southeast here, uh, mid-Atlantic, we do see increased probability for some slightly above average snowfall. Now, this is due to that negative NAO pattern that we've been seeing kind of typically uh, present more snowfall and cooler conditions over here for the southeast and mid-Atlantic. Now, when I talk about the southeast, we're not talking about down here in Dixie Alley or down in the Florida, but we are talking about the northern southeast and kind of down at the Tennessee. So we do see slightly above average conditions probable here at times um, when we see that trout thing develop over the Great Lakes here. We see a trout develop around that upper level low that could develop at times, and that will take the polar jet stream and collect that Gulf moisture along with the subtropical jet stream that could influence this as well. And we could see a lot of systems move through this area. And when the cold air presents itself, we could see a lot of colder air set up prior to this from high pressure systems, upper level highs developing ahead of these lows, and that will develop cold air before the moisture gets there and thus creating increased snowfall. But getting to a less technical aspect, we are just expecting slightly increased conditions for these areas. So if you live in this lighter blue region, you can expect some increased chances at some slightly above average snowfall for your winter season. Moving on to the darker region, this is above average snowfall, and this is where you're going to start getting to those interesting systems that we could see from what we see so far. Again, keep in mind that we are still very far out from our winter season, and this is our third forecast. If you look back at the other winter forecasts that we've made in the last couple months, we have changed quite significantly on some various levels. Some factors have stayed fairly similar, but we are going to change over time before we reach our winter season, and that's why I suggest you stay tuned with these. But as of right now, and what we've seen in our last couple forecasts, we do see that we could experience above average conditions here, anywhere from the Smoky Mountains all the way up through Washington, D.C., and up south in New York City. Uh, these areas do expect above average conditions during these type of conditions that we are expecting to set up this winter, and that shows that we could render some more significant snowfall events this winter for areas in here. Now, moving on up here to the northern United States, we do see slightly decreased snowfall expected, and this is due to a couple of factors. We are expecting some warmer conditions for much of these areas, but also some of these areas are expecting drier conditions. So that really indicates that your snowfall could be decreased because when we're talking about increased temperatures and decreased precipitation, those factors lead to slightly less snowfall. Obviously, it's a logical factor, but... As of right now, for these northern areas up in the Maine and all of the far northeast, we are expecting slightly decreased. Again, nothing too significant on the snowfall. It's not like you're going to lack tons of snowfall this winter, but we do expect a lot of those systems to kind of steer clear of here and a lot of that more significant snowfall to stay away. Now, you will still see your snowfall here this winter. We do typically see a lot of larger snowfall events come through here. These areas see a lot of snow every year but maybe take a couple inches off of your annual snowfall, and that's what you can expect. Now, sticking more to the west here, we are looking similar to our precipitation anomaly forecast map where we have these two drier regions here, and this is going to be signaling below average precipitation in the form of snowfall for your winter season. We do see for the northern Rockies here, we are expecting below average snowfall, and over here near Seattle and Portland, we are expecting below average snowfall as well. So this is where you likely will notice a decrease in your snowfall. You'll probably be thinking to yourself, man, this year has been a little bit drier on the snowfall side, and 
you're likely going to notice that. So if you're a snowfall lover, there's still time for this forecast to change. But from what we've seen so far in our past couple forecasts and the current trends, we are seeing below average snowfall projected for your winter season. Now, on our final forecast map, this is often the most exciting one because people love to see their unique regions on the forecast map and all the colors. But we do want to go over basically in a nutshell what you can expect to see for your winter season. So starting off here in the Pacific Northwest, like usual, we're going to go over here and you can see mostly dry. That's basically what you're expecting for this winter. Mostly dry conditions, nothing really too spectacular, not really that much rainfall. Now, this is the Pacific Northwest. We do see a lot of precipitation every season up in this area, whether it's drier or whether it's wet. But overall, we do see mostly dry conditions for these areas, a pretty significant decrease in what you would typically expect for your season. Now, on the contrary, bordering to the south, we do see anywhere from Los Angeles all the way up to the mostly dry region. We are expecting wet conditions. Um, now, obviously, where these two regions meet here, there is going to be a little bit of variability. So it's not like you're going to have a drastic change from dry to wet. But we will see mostly down here wet conditions. We are going to see a lot of those Pacific systems move on here from that subtropical jet stream. And they're going to kind of fade out as we move eastward. But that's why we see over here, we see wet conditions overall for much of California here. Now to the east, we see mild and occasionally wet. Now this is where things can get interesting because when we do have the occasional system make it over the Sierra Nevada mountains and over here with the subtropical jet stream, we could see wet conditions at times. Um, this isn't going to be too frequent, but at times you could see uh, wet conditions, but overall just mild conditions for much of your season, not too wet, not too warm, and not too cold. But we are expecting overall mild conditions and occasionally wetter periods throughout the winter season. Now to the north here, we are expecting warmer conditions as you expected. This is basically going to be the base year winter up here to the north. We've seen this region for the last couple of forecasts, and I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. So warmer conditions for the north. Um, and this some of these areas will have far warmer conditions. Some of these areas will have slightly warmer conditions. But overall, just a generally warmer winter for you guys who live in this region. Now over here in the bright pink region, this is storm genesis. And basically what this means is this is where your storms are likely going to form most often. So when we see uh, low pressure systems develop off of the Rockies and we do see a lot of these systems move down through the Great Plains, this is likely going to be the birth region for much of your storms. And then they're going to track eastward with a jet stream. Again, some of those could develop up over the Great Lakes around that upper level low, but we will likely see a lot of these systems develop over here in the Great Plains, and then we could see them move east and up over into the northeast, down through the southeast, and up into the northeast. So you could see, basically, we're going to move kind of dip down around that trough thing over the upper level low that could develop over the Great Lakes, and we could see, basically, this is where your storm systems move and develop and are basically birthed into existence. Now to the southeast here, we see cooler and stormy. Now, a lot of times with these setups, we could see severe weather in play as well. So we're obviously going to see a bit of cooler conditions down here to the south, but that doesn't mean you're going to have a lack of heat to the point where you're going to lack convection. We will likely see a lot of increased convection down here with those cold fronts coming through and a lot of that cold air moving through. We could see disturbances pop up where we have severe weather at times. So this is going to be more of a later winter type thing into early spring. We're not going to see frequent severe weather setups around November or December, but likely as we move into January and February, we will likely start to see those severe weather events pop up and become more frequent. To our north in the bright blue region, we see big snow. This is likely we're going to see some of those bigger winter storms move through. Now, this isn't going to be an everyday thing, so you're not going to see every day, every week, big snowstorms, but we will likely see one or two pretty large snowstorms move through this area, and we will often see frequent snow through this area depending on the type of setups that we get with the jet stream. To the north here, we have occasional storms. So this is kind of a region where you aren't really gonna get as much snow as the big snow region or the nor'easter region, but you will still see those shots and some larger winter systems move through, uh, depending on where the jet stream travels. So we could see occasional winter storms move through here. You may get some pretty decent storms coming through here as well, but not as much down here to the south where we see those larger systems tend to set up. And in our final region on the map, we do have the typical nor'easter region, and especially for an El Nino setup with a negative NAO pattern, we are expecting that jet stream to set up just what we need for nor'easter conditions. So we could see quite a few nor'easters this season. We already have seen those type of conditions set up, and when we see those systems move up along the coast and up along the northeast, uh, we will likely see nor'easter conditions move through this area, depending on if we get that cold air surging down south. And overall, we will likely see nor'easter conditions, a couple of them this year. 
I want to thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you did like this video, I would ask you to consider subscribing for Maria's forecast free of charge. And I would ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.